Good Thursday evening. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Everett here in the King 5 newsroom. Happy to report we are no longer in first alert. All of that stormy weather that we tracked last night has moved through. In fact, we're going to talk about that here in a moment and some of the very impressive lightning counts across the region. Saw a little bit of instability earlier this afternoon down by the Oregon state line, but now that it's getting late, and by the way, I'm taping this right around 7 p.m., so things stabilizing out there. Still tracking some rain moving through associated with that big low pressure system, but yeah, as far as the sky drama goes, it is over for the time being. Take a look at what we're looking at tonight is again the skies are dark over the Seattle Metro. 726 sunset tonight will be a bit of a muted affair as you can see there. Showers look like they will move in so a little bit of a wet start for the Mariners home opener tonight which first pitch 710 and then of course the Kraken are also at home tonight hosting Edmonton at Climate Pledge so if you are in the Seattle Metro traffic is going to be a bit on the ugly side. We'll see how the scores turn out later. Here's what we're looking at as far as conditions currently in the mid 50s and some light rain falling that will pick up well, the for next hour or so but then should start to taper around 10 o'clock tonight as folks are getting out of the games. Seven day forecast looks a little something like this. Now remember 55 is the average for this time of year. So we're going to dance around that except for one glorious day. Take a look at Sunday. It looks like we'll take a break in between systems there. Even Saturday itself should be fairly user friendly after we get some showers through in the morning. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to Sunday and you should too. Hey, we did a story earlier tonight on King 5 about a gentleman whose house was struck by lightning. Happy to report he's fine, but it put a trench in his backyard. Here's what's remarkable about that story. It wasn't the first time it's happened to him. He was also next to a massive lightning bolt when he was in the Marine Corps a few years ago. So I look it up. Here are your odds of being struck by lightning. They are 1 in 15,300. It's a pretty impressive number. Your odds of being struck by lightning twice go up significantly, 1 in 9 million. And since I was on a roll, I looked into it. Your odds of winning the Powerball, 1 in 272 million. So you have a significantly higher chance of being struck by lightning than you do of winning the Powerball. Storm reports over the last 24 hours in Everett. We heard of a couple of structures that were struck by lightning. Camano Island, two houses struck by lightning, including that gentleman I was just telling you about. And Hoquiam, there was some damage to equipment due to the lightning. So for the most part, this system came through and happy to report that we didn't see any major or widespread damage. Now, this is a little disappointing. The number of lightning strikes is showing over the last 24 hours. It doesn't take into account the lightning that fired up around 4 or 5 p.m. So earlier, this number of strikes box actually had well over a thousand strikes in it. So yeah, this was a pretty significant event. That first round of lightning went over top of the Olympics. Second round, as you can see, just walked up the I-5 corridor, just lit up the Seattle Metro and Snohomish County and Pierce County, and then later into Whatcom. And then all of those random strikes you see off towards the east were later in the night as that system kind of peeled off. Here's what it looked like in a 24 hour loop. Isn't that impressive? Yeah, that system just rolled through and lit things up. And then by, yeah, early this morning, we saw things start to calm down there. So it was a very impressive night there. This is a 24-hour loop that I've put together. Putting a two-hour loop back into motion here, you can see showers that are still rotating through associated with that low pressure that's sitting off the coast. But now that the atmosphere is stabilized and the cold air is could become the dominant force, not seeing much in the way of lightning out there. If you are planning on heading out to T-Mobile Park, well, you better get going because first pitch is in about 10 minutes. Folks, again, we'll see some showers to start the game, but by the time we get out of the game around 10 or 11 tonight, things should quiet down significantly, and then more rain will cycle through tonight. Now, if you're not going to the Mariners or the Kraken game tonight, you have a couple more opportunities. This is the beginning of a massive homestand for the Mariners, so there's going to be games all through the weekend. And again, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, the ticket tickets you want are on Sunday. 110 start there. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day after some morning fog. Kraken are also playing again at Climate Pledge on Saturday night. So if you're heading there, there will be some showers, but looks like it should also be a fairly pleasant evening to get out. Put the future into motion. We will continue to track some rain that will move from the Seattle Metro up through Snohomish and eventually into Whatcom County. Looks like off towards the Olympics, we'll see some rain that'll kind of just filter through. Heavier rain up towards Wenatchee around 9 or 10 o'clock tonight that will move through fairly quickly. And then as we saw earlier, it looks like more rain will cycle through after midnight tonight, especially over top of Seattle, Tacoma, and Olympia. 8.30 tomorrow morning, you guessed it's still showery out there. We'll just see bands that'll come and go throughout the day. And then as we go towards the evening, things will quiet down. Saturday morning, again, we'll see some spotty showers here and there. But as we go in towards the afternoon and especially towards sunset, that's when things start to clear up. And then take a look at Sunday. Here, we'll take a look at it from the big picture here. 
we get this one system to kind of tumble away from us. So this is Saturday just after midnight, Friday into Saturday. So again, a few random showers there and then, oh, you can hear angels sing. It's going to be beautiful out there. So make sure you take full advantage of that. It will warm up. So as that new system moves in on Sunday, there's possibility of some instability. But again, nothing to the extent that we saw with this last system. Then on Monday onwards, we'll see those systems kind of tumble on through until they eventually dive down towards the south on Wednesday and light up California and Oregon. Snow levels will drop down again as well. So it looks like we'll get a chance to maybe rebuild some snowpack after all that rain we've seen. Nothing particularly dramatic as far as the wind goes. But although it will remain breezy Thursday into Friday, as you can see on Friday, especially up towards Whidbey and Port Townsend, nothing really gusty, but never completely calm until we get into the second half of Saturday. High temperatures to round out the work week look a little something like this. Again, the average for this time of year is about 55, so we'll struggle with that on Friday. We'll definitely get there on Saturday, and then if I haven't mentioned it four or five times already, it looks like Sunday's going to be marvelous, so the timing's great there. And then as we head towards next week, things kind of go back towards average, and it looks like we'll be tracking some more rain moving through, which is kind of normal for this time of year. There you have it in a nutshell, live from the King 5 Newsroom. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Everett. Stay warm, stay safe, and have a great night.